Let's take our seats as I welcome our very own. A pruning fork that has been forged to become a weapon of warfare in the hands of our father, Reverend Hughes. An arrow in his quiver. A light bearer. One that has decided to push the kingdom of God in its expressions that she bears record to hallelujah. I'm talking of no other person but our own Pastor Mrs. Faith Iruegu. Hallelujah! Celebrate grace. Hallelujah! Please let's be on our feet as we honor our mama, our friend, our Pastor Mrs. Faith. You're welcome, ma. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. We are functioning from the glory room. Amen. And thus, our response should be befitting. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Rising in glory and honor. Now, you are just reciting. If here we don't recite, we prophesy. Amen. Our Father has taught us countlessly that our words are not just for communication, but also for creation. So each time you speak, you speak it like you mean it. So that even the angels of God's presence around your life will know you mean what you are saying. Because whatever has not touched you cannot touch God. Amen. I will say that again. Rising in glory and honor. Rising in glory and honor. Rising in glory and honor. Now we are going to look to your neighbor. Just look to somebody standing close to you. Now you are going to tell the person that's your experience. And you prophesy that. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Ah, no, I like that. Just hold on. Amen. We'll do it together. If that person is not saying, then turn and face me. <laughs> Amen. Rising in glory and honor. That's right. Rising in glory and honor. Rising in glory and honor. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. I'm going to sing um, just a song. I, there's so much of God's presence here. If you are sensitive, you will not just wait. This is not until the word comes that you're blessed. Even from the opening prayer, you can be blessed. Even from the testimony, even there's so much. So just go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just go ahead and begin to blast in the Holy Ghost. Just go ahead. There is something about God's presence that is not in the bank. There is something about God's presence that is not in the marketplace. There is something about God's presence that is not in eateries. There is something about God's presence that is not found anywhere. It is just specific to God's presence. And we are here today to drink from the living water. Just go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. My neighbor, do see if you can speak in the Holy Ghost, go ahead. If you can pray your understanding go ahead just go ahead and love on God this morning
lift up those hands one more time and so heavenly father we have come before your presence we have come to hear from you once again we have come to be transformed we have come to be reformed we have come to look more like you because you said as we keep beholding we keep becoming lord i stand under the grace of my father in the lord and i ask that let everyone that come to church this morning live with an answer let them live with the proof and evidence that they came to dine with you in the name of jesus lord let this word meet everyone at the point of their needs let this word become a lively seed that will generate and grow in them steadfastly in the name of jesus thank you father for in jesus victorious name we pray give a lot of big shout of praise as you take your seat in god's presence Hallelujah. I want to use this opportunity to um, appreciate my father in the Lord and my mama in the Lord. God's servant, Reverend Hughes Agu and Pastor Mrs. Faithfulness Agu in absentia. Please celebrate them. Is that how you celebrate your father? Is that how you celebrate your father? Hallelujah. That is unavoidably absent. Amen. And he has giving me the rare privilege to bring God's word to you this morning, which I don't take for granted. God doesn't use the qualified, he qualifies the call. Sometimes you wonder, what do you even have? But God is an expert in using the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. So I count it a great privilege each time I'm standing here, not because I am better, but because his mercy has found me. Amen. Um, I was in the campus church this morning to also minister God's word there. And it was mind-blowing. I trust that that same presence there and even much more here, cumulatively, would do you good this morning. In the name of Jesus. The last time I stood here, I was single. But now I am double. <laughs> Amen. I came with the love of my life. <laughs> Amen. I was telling them in the campus church today that when we're caught in, he said to me that I will not just permit you to do ministry, I will do ministry with you. You know, it takes a lion to house a lioness. It takes a lapidot to nurse a Deborah. There are many Deborahs, but lapidot are few. And thus I must celebrate him. When daddy called me to be here, he said, I will not allow you to go, but I will come with you. And he has given me peace. That's why I can even read the Bible and understand. Baby, too much. Help me celebrate my husband. <laughs> He's a very shy type. He's a very shy type. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, sir, for the privilege. Amen. I want to celebrate my pastors, New Nation pastors. God bless you, sir. Ma. I want to celebrate everybody that came to church today. I trust that God will do you good in Jesus' name. So quickly, we're going to be um, looking at the glory of daily personal prayers. The glory of daily personal prayers. Now, I'm not just going to be talking about prayers in generality. I know we've heard a lot about prayer, prayer, prayer. But today, I'm going to be showing you, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the, the benefits, the glory in having a personal prayer life. In having many of us, sadly, we only pray when we are in the company of people. But standing on our own, we can't pray. We don't have any weight physically, no weight in the realm of the spirit. We can't. But when we come to church, which is good, when we come in the company of people, we will blast. In fact, our tongues, haha, the highest. You know, people look at you and say, Kai, she say, pray. You know, we are in the generation where people tell the value of your prayer life by the way you look. Which is wrong. Because only God knows people who truly pray. You know, when they see you, you know, ah, ah, this man, they pray, oh, this guy. You don't even smile. God bless you. God bless you. you know, there's, there's a look. Mm -mm. But once they leave the gathering of God's people, they don't have any personal prayer life. That is not going to be an emphasis. Our emphasis for tonight is having a deliberately Tilling, cultivating a daily, not just a prayer life now, a daily prayer life. Hallelujah. Now, what is even prayers? Before I go for that, what is prayer? Now, I define prayer as a spiritual route that divinity interface with humanity. Prayer 
is a route that divinity consistently interface with humanity. You know, when we talk about prayer, many of us have grown believing that prayer is just when you kneel down, maybe you stand up and you just open your mouth and begin to pray to God and thank you Jesus and off you go. No. That is you telling God. Prayer is a system where you tell God and God speaks to you. It's a system where you send a signal to heaven and you wait for a response. Communication can only take place where two persons are involved. You know, when I, I, I traveled to Lagos and I was coming, I was going to my uncle's house. I went somewhere, I was going back. And I was in the vehicle. And my hair was disturbing this man that sat beside me. And the man was speaking Yoruba. He was just angry. He was just talking, talking, talking. I did not hear anything he was saying. I didn't even know he was referring to me. And that is how the hair continued to disturb him. He was parambulating, he was shouting. Do you understand? Now what is happening there is, he was talking but not communicating. He was talking because communication happens when the two can understand themselves. Do you understand? Now, the woman sitting close to the man had to now speak English and tell me, oh sorry young lady, he was trying to say that your hair is disturbing, can you adjust? I said, oh my God. So was this what this man was trying to say in the last five minutes? Then I packed my hair and we had a joyful ride. How many of us has been talking and not communicating? We feel, people say, ah, I have prayed, I have prayed, nothing is happening. It's not true, if you pray, something will happen. It is either you have been informing God and not talking or communicating with God. Prayer happens where God can hear you and you can also hear God. And God wants each and every one of us to get to that point where we can both hear him and him will hear us. Now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5, it said, when thou prayest, meaning prayer is a when and not an if. Hallelujah. Matthew 6 verse 5. Prayer is a when. It means it is a must. As long as you are a believer, you must pray. Because your, 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 your glory in this kingdom is at the mercy of your prayer life. Your survival in this kingdom is at the mercy of your consistent personal prayer life. You must pray. And that is why God is telling you when thou prayest. Meaning prayer is not subject to human negotiation. It is a principle that works. And if you don't apply it, you will not see the benefit of it. Even Jesus himself, Jesus himself prayed. While he was on earth, God himself praying. Who are you? Divinity putting himself together to pray. Who are you? Prayer. So we must consistently and intentionally cultivate the habit of praying. Not just praying as a oh, but a daily prayer life. Somebody said this morning, I will pray. I will pray. You are not saying with faith, I will pray. Something happened in Genesis chapter um, 3 verse 8. The Bible says that God desires to be so intimate with man that he will leave the angels. <laughs> he will leave the 24 elders. He will leave the heavenly beings, the heavenly beings and stroll into the garden of Eden. Excuse me. And the Bible says he will walk in the cool of the evening. God was not looking for the trees to talk to. He was not looking for animals. He was searching for man. Because he understood the importance of intimacy. He understood the importance of coming together. He understood the importance of communication. That is what prayer is. Oh. That was what God was looking for. Just to come and intimate with man. Prayer is not you shouting. Prayer is you whispering into the heart of God. You don't even need to shout. But if shouting is what makes you feel, of course it's good. But that doesn't mean people that shout don't pray. Hope somebody's getting blessed this morning. So God came for man. He said in the cool of the evening he will come. Because he values personal prayers. He knows the importance of meeting man. He knows the importance of intimacy. I always tell people something that intimacy means into me you see. See the word can suggest who you are not until you look into God. Until you look into God. Life can be, be, can be blurry until you sit down to look through the lenses of prayers. Prayer shows you your identity. Prayers reveals you cannot survive without prayer. And that is why the Bible says in Luke 18 verse 1, it says, man ought always, not sometimes. It doesn't matter what your emotions may be saying to you at that point, you pray. It does not matter your temperament, pray. 
It does not matter your denomination. Pray. It does not matter if your father has been a deacon for the past 18 years. Your father has built his altar. It is time for you to build yours. Because a point will come in the realm of the spirit where the track record of an intercessory mother will no longer stand for you. You have to dig. You have to stand. And that is why it is a personal work with God. Prayer. Hallelujah. Say, I will pray. No, no, no. We are saying it like we are scared. Say, I will pray. And prayer is an adventure of the spirit, not of the flesh. Have you, I don't know if it has happened to you. The day you say today, I will pray. If I don't see prayer, I will pray. After you have gyrated and all, you ended up not praying. If fact, that's the day you will sleep, the kind of sleep that will come, you'll be wondering that's because prayer goes beyond your desire. It is an activity of the spirit. You need to depend on the Holy Ghost. You need to ride. You don't even calculate. Some people are praying and they are looking at the clock. That is when the clock will stop moving. Is somebody relating to what I'm saying? Prayer. Amen. Now, having heard about this prayer, and our topic says, the glory in daily personal prayers. How can I build a daily personal prayer life? How can I build a daily personal prayer life? I will say that one more time. How can I build a daily personal prayer life? And when you are asking this question, it means you are already at the point of desire. You are tired of where you are. You want to change. You are tired of your life. You want to change. Now, one of the things that will help you co coordinate or cultivate a personal prayer work is having a daily meeting point with God. That's the number one. A daily meeting point with God. Now, Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Now, Jesus understands that distractions is one of the major reasons why people don't pray. Some of them have the desire to pray. But now, they don't, beyond the desire, they don't have anything else. So what did Jesus do? He would leave his house, leave wherever he slept. Before morning, he would depart, the Bible said, into a solitary place and begin to pray. How do you have a solitary place you pray? What is the first thing you do when you wake up? See, the, what you do in the first three hours of your life consistently will tell us how your future will look. We are not soothsayers. Your routine will predict your end. Great men don't just come out from the blues. There are principles they strictly follow that make them who they are. Have you seen those people going to the gym? You think they are built because they admire six pack. You will walk the walk and pray the pray. Jesus will depart. He will separate himself. He will wake up and pray. Many of us, we have lost touch. We, do, we can't sit that money and die any money sweet. Ah, Jesus, take the money. Jesus, take the food. But see that sleep, don't come close. That three o'clock. If your mother touched you, if not that she's your mother, you don't. You can't let go. You can't let go. If you must make progress in this kingdom, then you need to learn the ways of sacrifice. You need to build intentionally. It will not be sweet, but your life will be sweet. It will not. Because as long as you keep sleeping, your destiny will sleep. But the day you choose to arise, there will be a change. If you are tired of the same result, change your practice. The first thing Jesus does in the morning is to pray, not to Facebook. Your destiny is in the hands of God, not in Mark Zuckerberg's. I told them something today in the campus church. I said, if they collect your phone for two months, will you still have a spiritual life? Will you still be coordinated? We say we love God. Truly is it God we love. Our father in the Lord, God's servant, Reverend Hugh Sagbo, he caught this principle in 2006. And from that time to now, daddy doesn't miss money prayers. 
He doesn't. The way we go to secondary schools and everybody must come and answer his or her name in register. That is what you do in the morning. How many absentees do you have in the record of your life? That is it. The way every morning, even if you come, if you come late, maybe you come during the break to school, in the record it is sticks what? Absent. That is the validity of praying in the morning. How do you expect to succeed in the day you did not command? The morning hours is the time you command your day. You shape it. You speak to it. You organize it. You tell. See, things will not happen to you impromptu because you have predicted how the day should look like. They can't call you and say your mother just had an accident. No, because when you were talking to God, you, you covered her. Pray in the morning. Say, I will pray in the morning. No, some of us are still... Say, I will pray in the morning. Even if you don't have plans to pray, tomorrow, God will wake you up. He will become that invisible alarm. Because some of us, alarm. What is alarm? Our, in fact, if they put five alarm before our ear, it will, we will not wake up. The sleep appetite is bigger than alarm. And hear me. You cannot sleep like you are in the land of the dead and expect to make it in the land of the living. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little... And now what has happened? Before you pray against poverty, please check if you are the courtsy. Sometimes you may be praying against yourself. Because poverty will not go because you prayed. It will go because you prayed and acted. Wake up. Jesus said we should look up to him. He's the altar and the finisher of our faith. Seek him early. The Bible says something in Psalm chapter 63 verse 1. He said, early will I seek you. Meaning you can seek God late. I see women that are 80 years still doing evangelism. I like it. I admire them. But some of them is not because of Z. It is because they played while they were young. If you play when you are young, you will pay the price when you are old. But if you pay the price when you are young, you will enjoy when you are old. You will enter your rest. There are some people you see them, you know, what, is an, what does an 85-year-old woman have doing in the market? What did you do when you were young? The Bible says we should bear our yoke when we are young because there is a strength that being young carries. He said, early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. Make it a point of duty to always commune with God every morning. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning what? If we have Bible students, in the beginning what? In the beginning what? Meanwhile, when you wake up, it is what? Or it should be what? As you wake up in the morning, it should be what? God first. Don't reach out for your phone. Reach out for the word because the word will produce many phones. Pray. Pray. Somebody say, I will pray. pray. Hallelujah. If you can't give God your full attention, he will not give your life a full attraction. He will not. God commits himself to only men that commit, himself, commit themselves to him. He will not break protocol for your sake. For what? He will not. Even Jesus paid the price. He didn't break protocol for you. When Jesus said, Father, let this call pass me by. The cop did not pass Jesus by. Is he you it want to pass? Receive the grace to pray. In the name of Jesus. After today, every weakness dies. In the name of Jesus. Unusual strength comes. In the name of Jesus. But the second point on how I can build a daily prayer life is be determined to start from where you are. Be determined what? To start from where you are. That will always tell us in church. He said, dream big, but don't be scared to start small. I know you want to be Ben Hinn. I know you want to be Catherine Kuma. I know you want to be Lester Sumara. I know you want to be A.A. Allen. I mean, I know when you come, when you do like this, even the cameraman goes under power. I know. But as big as those dreams are, if you don't have a consistent prayer life, if you don't start a little, hmm, you will join the cooperative of men that dream. You know there's an association like that, Dreamers Association. I know somebody like that, his name is... He, <laughs> if he tells you his dreams, 
And since I knew him, the only thing I know he has is the dreams he keeps sharing. That will not be our portion here. In the name of Jesus. Start small. I know as you are listening to me, that's happened to me before. When the man of God is preaching, Kai, ka, ba, 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 you are saying as I live here, my mother will know that a lioness has had risen. See, when I close the door, even if ah, everybody gather, I will not open this door. It is me and prayer. You will gyrate and gyrate. Sweetheart, motivation will keep you going. Only consistency will keep you growing. You don't ride in this kingdom by motivation. Motivation is good, but it will not sustain you. You need consistency. You need to be consistent. Many people have prayer power, but they lack stamina. They lack the energy. Energy is better from consistency. It is the little consistent drops of water that makes an ocean. I always tell people something. <laughs> I say Rome was not built in one day, but Rome was built daily. Rome was not built in one day, but Rome was built daily. What does God's word have to say about this? The Bible says in Psalm chapter 84 verse 7, it says, They go from strength to strength. Everyone appeared in Zion. They keep going. They keep moving. Have a schedule. Have a prayer life. Me, when I started, I started from 10 minutes. Daddy was even sharing his story. When he, she always shares that story with us in campuses and here. He said when he wanted to cultivate a personal prayer life, he started from 15 minutes a day. From 15 minutes, he grew to 20 minutes. From 20 minutes, he grew and grew and grew and grew. If you know that daddy prays, forget the gentle look. See, we groan at night so we can glow in the day. Don't be, don't be carried away by the microphone or the beauty. If you see our prayer posture, you may not like it. He prays. He's a man of prayer. But he didn't just disappear and became what he is today. No. He had consistent record of always praying. I know you have a busy work schedule, but still pray. Even if it's 15 minutes before you go to job, you will not be late. Even if it's as you enter that vehicle, you are praying, praying, praying before you get there. Even if it's before you get to the class. If no matter how busy you are, you can take your bath, then you can pray. That's a good place to celebrate Jesus. Some of us, we can never skip a meal. For what? We are dietitians with our own certificates. We don't joke. How come you are joking with life? It means your priority has changed. It is now in your quadrum. It is now you before God, not God before you. So pray. 15 minutes, pray. Me, when I started praying, when the first, <laughs> the first one hour I prayed in my life, I wanted to die. Me. One hour. In fact, I started operating my phone. I was deceiving myself, I guess. I was chatting and mark up like that. And just would just be like, what is, what is she doing? Ah, but I, when, when, when daddy, um, in 2016, daddy announced in church that we're going to have a 10 hours prayer bash. I said, I will not come. What will I be saying for 10 hours? What, like, what, when I came from that time, to this year. This year was the only time I didn't join because I got married. It was there. Because how did I get there? This was me that was struggling with one hour. What happened with growth took place. As long as you are consistent, you begin to grow. You begin to grow. That is why a child, you wear a child pajamas when the child is two months, three months, four months, that, that cloth will not size that baby again because the baby is growing. The child grows. And that's why the Bible says, and the baby Jesus grew in this kingdom. Consistency best growth. You don't jump. Daddy will always tell us that <laughs> if you grow up, you will stay up. If you jump up, you will fall. You grow. The Lord will give us the grace to be consistent in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Now the third point is don't just be consistent. What, what, one of the things that will help your consistency is discipline. Say with me, discipline. No, 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 no. You're not saying, say discipline. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Be steadfast. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. 
Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13. It says, Therefore, He said, the fire shall never ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. My own translation here says, therefore, on the altar shall be fire burning on it. It shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and he shall arrange it for burnt offering. See, don't ever allow your fire burn out. Now, he said the fire shall never be burning out. The fire on your altar shall never go out. Now, that altar represents you. The fire now represents your prayer life. Don't ever allow. Jesus knows that things will come that will weigh and, and contend with the fire on your altar. That is why he's saying be strong. Don't allow it. <laughs> you get why? There's a song that says, I will pray. I will pray. <laughs> if I don't pray, Satan will do what? He will not make mess of you. Because he will pray. Each time you pray, you put Satan on 440. He runs. He runs. Let the fire on your altar never go down. And the antidote of prayerlessness is prayer. People will say, ah, people come and meet me and say, Pastor Faith, ah, please I want to pray. I desire the, the, the grace, the mantle. There is no impartation for prayer. Am I lying, Pastor Peter, sir? Mommy, am I lying, ma? I, I think that's what they feel. They feel like if you just give them. No, 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 no. You do it with swag. <laughs> Take it. They will fall and see that day you will sleep. You will even dream sweet dreams so you can't wake up easily. There is no. And impartation comes to you as a seed. You water it. See, in this kingdom, you don't watch impartations like accolade. You will with them. You will. You give them life. Every impartation comes to you as a seed. That is why you will bring five people here and lay hands on them. The, the same prayer point, but they will come back with different results. You have to work with it. If you like, come here and pray for. <laughs> Thank God, church is always open. Pray here for the next five hours, five months. If you, if maybe Adi will lay hands on you. If you don't come here and keep watching your home, if you don't water your altar, <laughs> You will be worse. Because when the devil sees that you have been impacted, him too, he will step up his attack. The higher you go in God, the higher you are promoted. If kindergarten demons have been fighting you, maybe you, they are pressing you, are seeing the realm of shouting Jesus. And then you stop shouting Jesus and you start shouting fire. Principalities will come. Because the devil is disciplined. He's disciplined. No matter how much you come and scare him with your testimonies, he will, he will, go back. He will come back. In his mind, he's like... Before he does this, we will do, 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 because we are ready. Say, my fire will never go down. My fire will never go down. And therefore, I will be disciplined. Now, the fourth one is, have an unwavering hunger. In fact, be obsessed about prayers. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between hunger and obsession. Do you know that there are some times that you are so hungry that you don't eat? How many of us have been there? You know you are hungry, but you can't cook. I mean, to have been there. There are so many times when I come back from work, I can't, I'm, I am very hungry. But I can't cook. My body is weak. <laughs> but you see people that are obsessed. If you like, let firewood be inside the bush, they will go and get it. They don't talk food. It, the only way you know that they are hungry is that they are cooking. I know we have people like that. Why? I did not call anybody's name. The way you are looking at people, I don't understand. They are hungry. All the whole eatery, all the sales girl knows them. Uh -uh. They will even call you on the phone. We have not seen you in the, in the past. If you are here, leave food and touch God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was on the lighter note. That was on the lighter note. So have beyond hunger, be obsessed with prayer. Don't just talk it, pray it. If you are hungry, you go and get the food and eat. If you are obsessed, you get the food and eat. If you don't know how to pray, stand up and pray. That is it. I don't know how to pray, so start praying. The next time somebody tells you that pray for me, say so you don't know how to pray, yes. Open your mouth and pray. Masha, that, that is it. So you pray. There is no special thing. Any man of God you admire today, he farmed. He tilled. That is why his life is worth your admiration. If you do the same, you'll be admired much more. I see the Lord giving you the grace. 
an unwavering hunger. I see you becoming obsessed with the things of God. I see you becoming obsessed with prayer. In the name of Jesus, they that know their God will be strong and do exploit. To know God is a function of an intimate work with Him. Many have heard of Him, only few know Him. Satan will make mess of me. Ah, I, I will pray. I will pray. Oh, if I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. That will not be our portion here in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9, it says, My spirit within me seek you diligently. Seek you diligently. The Bible also said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, you say you will seek me and find me if you seek me with the whole of your heart, not some. That is hunger. That point where you will leave your job. See, there's a point in life where you need to close your shop. Your customers will not go. In fact, the fire from your altar will pull them. Sometimes close that shop. Sometimes take that leave. Don't travel to Dubai. Please create your future. Sometimes smooth, stay down and pray. Pray. Shape your life. Shape your destiny. Shape your future. And be intentional about it daily. And that is why in the lost prayer, God said, Give us our daily bread, not our monthly cake. Even God is intentional about giving you daily bread. How about you? you the only time God sees you is when you collect lap and you cannot pay. When you collect money from those apps and they start sending messages to all your contacts, this person has a proven record to be a dubious criminal. You know those messages now. Don't you receive them? Why are you pretending? <laughs> from today, because you will pray, you will no longer borrow. You begin to gift men. The last money you borrow will be the last. Because you will function in the glory realm. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, we don't have time. The blessings of a consistent prayer life. I'll be fast here. The blessings of a consistent prayer life. Now, one of the things a consistent prayer life does to you is number one. Prayer recharges your faith. Daddy was teaching, teaching us about faith. He said there is, there is weak faith. There is strong faith. And there is what? An overcoming faith. I have faith. I have faith. <laughs> it's not by saying it. Life issues will show us if you have faith. It's not by saying it. And the issues of life will tell us where your faith belongs. Whether it is in weak, whether it is in strong, or you have metamorphosed to the point of an overcoming faith. Where nothing moves you, you only move things. You are not moved. Take the stage, take everything. Jesus, it is me and you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. Meanwhile, it is not even your prayers alone that makes God please with you. It is faith. Now, what prayer does it? It recharges your faith. As long as there is no law at time in your faith account, you will keep withdrawing. When you slot in your ATM of faith, your ATM card into the ATM machine of faith, you will withdraw possibilities. You don't understand. Prayer builds your faith. It takes away doubt. See, when doubt steps in, faith runs out. These two cannot cohibit. How can you come and pray that God, let me go to Abuja and save no accident and motor enter gallop? You say, Jesus, Jesus, Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus. Meaning you are scared. When you pray, when you have faith, you are not scared. Even when the motor jerks, say, ah, if I didn't pray, I would be scared. I am the safety on the road. Even if there was accident, because I am in this car, I control it. I can't die. God didn't tell me I would die by accident. It will not glorify my God. Say, I will have faith. Faith means collecting drip in the hospital and still saying I cannot be sick. Can you do it? How is your health? Mm. That's all we see, Amo. No. Don't be so we see, Amo. You create what you want to see. Even when the doctor comes and meets you and tell you that you have three days to live because you are cantarous, you say, sir, good diagnosis but wrong patient. Celebrate Jesus. Prayer recharges your faith. 
you want to pay a bright price and your father-in-law calculate all his problem inside the list. Because he is far from God. He even said that you will train the last born from secondary from nursery school to university masters. <laughs> and you look at the list. You say, Baba, no shaking, is this all? <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. Have faith. So that when you tell your husband, like you I'm telling my husband, I need the car, you will say, Baby, is this all? <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. See, when you pray, God listens. When God listens, He walks. When God walks, you should believe. I call it the triple action. When you pray, God listens. And when you listen, God speaks. When you believe, God walks. Now, the second blessings of a consistent daily prayer life is prayer quietens the activities of the soul daddy has taught us here countlessly that our spirit man does not have a sin problem it is <laughs> our spirit is seated in what heavenly places amen now the only problem we have is how to cooperate with the spirit so that we can shape those realities to our soul and now those realities from our soul will be manifested in our body that is where the problem comes. If you don't pray, your soul will overshadow you. The soul is a strong component of a man. Very strong. So one of the things prayer does is it quietens those activities of the flesh that will not let you be. If you don't kill flesh, flesh will kill you. It's that powerful. You will quieten your soul. See, if you don't pray, you discover that those things you overcome will start overcoming you. You will discover that... Ah, God delivered you from masturbation two days, two years ago. But because you stop praying consistently, masturbation now has come on a higher level through of us. This thing happens. If you don't consist, if you don't build a consistent prayer life, those things you overcome we, we start see the kind of lie that will come out of your mind, even that will be like, eh, this one passed me. Even you, you'll be shocked. You will not know that you have the ability to kill you. See, if not for God, man is wicked. Even Bible said the heart of man is what? Desperate. It does not say it's wicked. It says it is what? Desperately wicked. If Abel can be killed by his brother, huh? if a man can kill his wife, if a man can strangle his son, if a man can sleep with his daughter, what can man not do? Prayer puts your flesh subject to the spirit. And all of this happens in your soul level. If you pray, see that masturbation you are, you are struggling with, expose it to prayer. Each time you don't pray about those weaknesses, you are pampering it. You are enjoying it. If you don't enjoy it, we will see you in the altar. You will pray. Pray to the point that heaven will hear you. Whatever you are struggling with, there is enough sufficiency in God. The only thing is you are covering it. Expose it to fire. Let the fire of God sieve. Let the fire of God saturate. Let the fire of God prune, transform, reform, and make you fit. Daddy will say, God will not use a vessel that is, in ho that is unholy to convey that which is internal. You need to be purged. And that is a function of prayer. So one of the blessings is that as you continue to pray, your flesh will die. People will annoy you, you don't react. It happens. You, prove, <laughs> you that God wants to help you in hot, you are, you are, you are hot temper. Transformer is learning work. When you stand, everybody runs. When you begin to pray, they will slap you, you will turn the other side. Because you are weak. You are no longer you. Jesus is not the one living through you. Prayer. As you pray, every activities of the flesh that is not giving God full assets to maximize you and use you for his glory dies today in the name of Jesus. Those struggles, those additions, those things that pull you out of God's from God's presence dies in the name of Jesus. So, of us, what this fire will do, us, do for us is that it will distract us and cut us off from every activities of the past. We are holding. We are holding strong to the past. If you don't let go of the past, you cannot get access to the future. And that is why when God wants to use a man, he's not interested in your past. He's only interested in your now and how you want him 
to help you in the future. When the wife of Hosea, Gomez, sinned, when God came, he didn't call her a prostitute. He called her by her name because he knew that beyond her physical limitations, something good can come out of her. Yes, you have committed the abortion, but expose that weakness to God. You will no longer abort babies. You will abort illicit decisions. You will abort demonic operations. The past should make you better, not bitter. Like my husband, we always say, he said the past should be a place of reference and not a place for residence. So God will quicken you. He will help you. He will take you out. He has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. And this only prayer that carried, Rev said, prayer is a mechanical system that serves our spiritual engine. You know when you take a car to the mechanic, even the things that you did not know, they will tell you that it happened. This one spoiled, that one spoiled. They will serve his wash. That's what prayer does. And I trust that God will give us the grace to enjoy this blessing in the name of Jesus. Now the third blessing is the faculties of our spirit man comes alive. The faculties of our spirit man comes alive. That's one of the things we enjoy. You know, daddy told us in church that God does not have a releasing problem. We have the receiving problem. Everything we need has been made available in heavenly places. Now you just have to trust God so that you can become aligned that that which has been made available, you will assess them and manifest them. And that's one of the things prayer does for you. It makes your spiritual eyes sensitive. Those eyes is not for TikTok. Is to see things for your family as a priest. <laughs> as a lady here, you can wake up and tell your husband, Honey, as you are going to the work, I see two men trying to drag your seat. One is wearing blue, the other is wearing white. But don't talk to them, go straight to your boss. It will end up as a double promotion. And he goes, it happens that way. When he comes back home, <laughs> the kiss will start from the leg. Forgive me. Because beyond your wife, you have become a priest. Same as the husband. You become a priest because you can see. The reason why many things have happened to us and we are not proud of them is because why men slept? The devil came out. You need to wake up. Stop sleeping. Don't wait until somebody dies before you become an intercessor. Wake up. Don't wait until somebody is barren before you become an... Anna. Don't wait until bad circumstances happen to people around you before you charge up. Stay connected. See, if you have a farmyard, whether you choose to plant or not, something will grow. Whether you choose to plant or not, something will grow. Now, the thing is, weeds will grow. If you don't cultivate the life, the destiny God has given to you, see, it will become what you don't expect. Pattern your life. Say, I receive the grace to pray. And I enjoy the blessings. And I enjoy the blessings. Now the, now the fourth, that scripture, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, you can write that down, down, where the Bible talks about where men slept. That's Matthew 13, from verse 24 to 30. Now the fourth blessing is, daily prayers will perpetually dislodge the activities of darkness and give you access to unlimited breakthrough. I will say it again. Daily prayers we perpetually dislodge the activities of darkness, thereby giving you access to unlimited breakthrough. Hallelujah. See, a man who is experiencing God will never be at the mercy of a man who has just arguments, which is the devil. One of the blessings you will enjoy is divine coverage. Demonic things will not, activities of, the, of demons, we have no business with you. Because the Bible says light shines and darkness does what? Comprehended it not. You are the light of that family. You are the light of that business. You are the light of that department. You are the light in, anywhere you are, in your school, your family, your workplace. You are the light. So how come darkness is challenging your authority? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3, it says a light that, that, that kings will come to the brightness of our light. It is high time for your light to become bright. If not, kings will not come. Are you tired of the track records of demonic manipulation? Nobody marries in your home. 
Some of us near success syndrome. We have gone for the interview just when the result will come out. You became sick. People have promised you and promised you to the point that you don't even want to hear anybody that is even bearing promise. If you have a consistent and a daily prayer life, those activities will be dislodged because God will create a spiritual insurance system that covers you. He becomes your assurance. He becomes a stronghold around your life. The name of, a G, or the name of Jesus is what? The strong tower. The righteous run into and they are saved. That's one of the blessings you enjoy. And finally, when you have a daily consistent prayer life, you begin to draw from the favor realm. You begin to enjoy the glory realm. You begin to experience unlimited favor. I mean, God will bless you to the point that men will ask, now only you there. Are you the only one surviving? Are you the only one in that department? How come from year one to final year, no record of CEO? Even your lecturers are lectured by you. God will bless you so much that even those occultic men that bury stuffs and all kind of wicked activities in the front of their shop in the market, you, you don't bury things. The only things you bury is the flesh. Because you are a man of prayer. Because you are a woman of prayer. When you come, it is still your shop. See, customers will even line up and be waiting for you. It is possible. The Bible says, as far as your eyes can see. There is a connection between prayer and favor. If I'm lying, ask Esther. Esther did not depend on her beauty. It was not her beauty that attracted favor. It was her prayer life. Because if God rests upon you the mantle of favor and you don't have a consistent prayer life, you will abuse it. You will abuse it. So one of the blessings that a consistent prayer life will give to you is his favor. Daddy will always say, favor is not fair. You are the youngest in the family, yet suitors will keep coming for you. Not just responsible ones. Lies consistently fall in place for you. Some of us have suffered to the point that we think suffering is a good style. It's a good lifestyle. You want to enter, they say, come and fly outside the country. You say, no. Is there no road transport? You know, you can become, you can suffer to the point that you think there is no enjoyment. That will not be your portion. If you came with that kind of embargo because of the anointing in this house, it is dislodged. You begin to enjoy favor. Unlimited favor. See, there will be a track record of perpetual favor in your life and destiny. When people want to explain favor, they say, acts of that name. Put your name there. When they are asking for a definition of favor, it is you that comes in mind. Because God is pleased with you. See, when you enter the glory realm, anything is possible. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, Moses, Moses said, Except your presence go with me, I will go nowhere. When you begin to enjoy favor, you carry God's presence. They say things are not happening, but when you come, you change protocol. You become a protocol breaker. The doors that people could not open, you, you stand, that door opens. Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? Can we be on our feet this morning? We can't talk about prayers without praying. And we're not just talking about prayer, we're talking about a personal prayer life. I know that, let the, that today as we pray, the fire upon this altar will revitalize our spiritual life. We will seek God early in the morning. We will keep Facebook aside and seek God. We will keep social media, walk everything and seek God. Because God becomes the ultimate. I will not give you a prayer point. Just go ahead and say, Lord, go ahead and pray. Revive my prayer life. Help me cultivate a consistent daily prayer life. I don't want to pray only on Mondays. I don't want to pray only on Thursdays. I want to pray daily. I want to become a slave of prayer. I want to be addicted to prayer. I want to see God early. I want to wake up and it is God first. I want to put God first. Go ahead and pray. It is not a time to look around. In the next two minutes, go ahead and pray. In the next two minutes, go ahead and pray. Matos parada selakati arata perinos tu capa pavis tu capa rica te tu capa. Go ahead and pray the next two minutes. It is time for God to hear your voice. It is time for God to hear your voice. Ape apa kapa 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 robo robo kong melekai na robo robo kapa kapa tele kata 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 tua kata kata kati a robo robo kong dekia na robo kata kata kati a kapa kati a kata kata esepe kata kata kati a kata. Come to peace with the Lord. 
impartation from God. I'm seeing it will not take my attention from God. Revive me. Revive me. I refuse to be familiar. I know you are a prayer warrior, but I'm still praying. You need grace. You need grace. You need grace. Come before the throne of grace. That you may obtain grace. standing beside you. One more prayer point and that will be that. Say, Lord, revive her prayer altar. Give her a daily, consistent prayer life so she can function in the glory ring. The team of our years said what? I rise, rise in the glory and honor. But one of the routes to rising in glory and honor is a consistent daily appearance before Zion. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray for that person you are holding hands with. Say, Lord, revive him. Lord, revive her. Revive new nation. Revive new nation. Revive our personal prayer lives. Revive our prayer lives. No more excuses. No more excuses. If you know, and you are sure, as God's servant takes over, that you have not received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, please just wave at me. Don't be shy. There is not a time to be shy. The Bible says, they that know their God, it is time for you to know your God. If you know that you have not made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, anybody, anybody, all right. I pray for you that you will not miss it in life. Just lift up those hands. I pray for you that the last weakness you had praying will be the last. You will receive a common grace and freshness to never be missing daily before God. In the name of Jesus. And as you pray, God will bring your miracles to your hands. And as you pray, God is changing your financial lives. And as you pray, God is changing your marital lives. And as you pray, God is swallowing up death for you. And as you pray, God is opening ways for you. And as you pray, I see miracles. I see health issues treated now. I see health issues treated now. I see demonic operation dislodged. I see you rising as a champion. I see you in that business. You are becoming the number one. I see you becoming the head and not the tail. Your light shines and darkness cannot comprehend. I see new nation going from grace to grace. I see new nation expanding across the face of the earth. I see lionesses, lions are rising here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it's done. For in Jesus' victorious name we pray. Come and give the Lord a big shout of praise.